Hello and welcome to our channel, Tech Expert Tutorials. In this video, we will show you how to install both the PostgreSQL database and pgadmin4, the GUI interface to access your database. We will also show a few simple commands to test the database application installation. First, search for PostgreSQL download and select postgresql.org slash download. You will see several installations for different OS's. Today, we will be installing the Windows version. Check back with us later for installing the Linux version. You can also download the source code to customize the applications. Click on Windows. On this screen, you will see several versions of Postgres SQL. You can choose an older option if you are looking for a more stable version. 16 is the most recent version listed here. These versions have all been tested thoroughly by a company named EDB or Enterprise DB. They provide and support a commercial version of Postgres. If you click on the link at the top, download the installer, you will find a more recent version. As of today, 17.2 is the newest version available for the general public. Now click on the download button under Windows 64-bit. The download should start in a few seconds. The full download takes less than a minute on my connection. You can check the status on the upper right download button. The file size is 330 megabytes. Click on the file to start the installation. A window will pop up for the setup wizard. Click on next. The screen will show the default setting for the installation directory. You can change the location if desired. Then you will see the components that will be installed, including the database server, the pgadmin GUI application, stack builder for installing more components later, and some command line tools. Click Next. Next you will see the data directory. If you have a separate hard drive, you can choose to save your data there. Click Next. Now you need to set up a new password for the super user account with the username of Postgres. Click Next. You will see the port here. Save this if you are planning to connect to the database remotely. Click Next. Here, you can set the locale if you don't want to use the default locale set up by your PC. You can see there are a lot of options here. Click Next. Here is the list of selected options for you to view before starting the installation. Click Next. Click Next again. This will start the installation, which will take between 5 and 10 minutes to complete. First, the installation starts unpacking files, then it's creating needed directories. Finally, it creates an uninstaller for you to use if you want to remove this from your desktop later. Once it is completed, you have the option to launch Stack Builder to install more tools and drivers. For now, we will leave it selected to show the next step, but then we cancel it since we are not covering the other tools and drivers today. Click Finish. You will see your installed database here, and you can set up proxy servers if needed. We click on Cancel to skip this step. The database should be installed and running now. To work with the database, search for the pgadmin app. This will open up a GUI IDE specifically for you to use with Postgres SQL. Once it opens, click on the server's item on the left and enter the password you created earlier for the super user account. The first thing you will see is the dashboard. Not much to see here yet since we just started the database and haven't accessed it yet. We'll come back to this to view the activity later on. Click on the databases icon and then the Postgres icon. This is the default database that is created during the installation. To create a new database, right click on Postgres and select Create, then select Database. Type in a name. We will use DemoDB. If you want to see the SQL script for this, click on the SQL menu item. You see the Create Database statement here with some default options. Go back to General, then click Save. The new database will show up now, next to the default database. Click on Schemas to view the list. So far, there is only a public default schema here with no tables yet. To create a table, we will show you how to do this using an SQL script. You can also select Create Table here. 
Go to the database you created, then open a Create Script window. Also, this is how you would create a table using the interface. To build our SQL, we will use Gemini AI to create our Create Table statement. Here is the prompt we use, giving Gemini instructions on what we want and what to include. Double check the code before you run it. Gemini can make mistakes. For example, to check on the data types, here's a web page with details on all data types available. Now we will copy this and paste this into our query window. Clear the query window and paste the SQL here. To run this, click on the play or run button at the top. Any errors or other messages will show up in the window below. Go back to the tables item and refresh the list. You should see the demo table listed here now. Note that the name is all lowercase, even though we add uppercase characters in our SQL statement. This is the default behavior. Expand the table to view the columns. To see more details, right click and select scripts, then create to view the create table script for this table. Notice the primary key constraint has been created with the default name here. A default owner is also added. Now we are going to insert some sample data using Gemini again to build the SQL statement. Copy and paste this back to our query window again, then run it. To run it, select the SQL that we want to run, otherwise everything will run. That will cause errors. Our query ran with no issues. Let's run a select statement to verify. Looks like our five values were inserted with no issues. To close the query window, Go to the top and click on the X to the right of the window that you want to close. You can save this for later. We will select Don't Save here. Finally, we will drop the table. Delete the SQL from before and hit the Execute button. Refresh our list again and the table is not there anymore. Now we go back to the dashboard and we can see a lot more activity there. We see one active connection in the upper left some transactions per second values over time, data input and output, and finally the I.O. measured in blocks. Under state, we can see a list of transactions and connections over time and any table locks. The configuration tab shows a large list with the names and values along with the description. This is useful information if you want to change some settings, like if the database is slow or having issues. There's also a view into your logs, showing some high-level information over time. System stats is not installed. You'd want to use this if you are the admin for the database. All right, that's all we have for today. Please stay tuned for more videos on advanced topics with desktop databases, including PostgreSQL, MySQL, SQL Server, and Oracle. As always, comments and suggestions are welcome. Please like and subscribe to our channel. See you next time.